Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to go back to 2005 and look at how Liverpool were able to complete a miracle at Istanbul to defeat Milan, courtesy of Rafa Benitez's tactical changes. When we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Liverpool in a 4-4-1-1 and we have AC Milan playing in a midfield diamond of 4-3-1-2. The biggest issue that Liverpool had here was that they were overloaded in midfield in a 4v3 battle and they didn't look to close down Andrea Pirlo. Low. The other factors that did come into play is that with that midfield overload, Kaká was able to get the ball in between Xabi Alonso and Steven Gerrard, and that was a big problem for Liverpool in that first half. When we assess Liverpool's shape, the problem that they have here is that yes, you do expect Maldini and Cafu to push forward. We actually saw Gattuso drop off a bit deeper so we can have Cafu push forward and peg back the wider player, but the biggest issue that they ended up having there was that you have Harry Kuhl sticking to Pirlo, but then you have Gerard and Alonso in that midfield zone. Alonso was stuck sticking deeper because Gerard was often caught out of position, and the biggest problem that they had there was that even if Gerard does step to Gattuso, you have Seydorf shifting to the right of Xavi Alonso, and you have Kaká dropping off deeper to receive the ball in between the lines. So you have 2v1 near Xavi Alonso, and even if you have Gerard sticking into his position, that frees up Gattuso. So that that was a big problem that Liverpool encountered in that first half and we saw it in the opening stages. Liverpool did fall behind early on and that was due to their set piece errors. The other issue that Liverpool encountered in that first half was Milan's midfield overload and what we ended up seeing there was as we had Kaká dropping off between the lines we also saw Pirlo being able to get time on the ball to dink balls over the top and that was because Kuehl wasn't getting tight to him and the way that Milan's attack did operate was that you had Kaká dropping off between the lines. You had Crespo looking to dart in between Carragher and Sami Hifia, and you ended up seeing Shevchenko look to dart into the space between Hifia and Traore, or looking to peel off Traore to get into good positions. Initially, we had Pirlo from a deeper position dinking the ball over that Liverpool defense, and Shevchenko did peel off Traore, but when he received that ball in right half space, his first touch was heavy, and Sami Hifia was able to recover. And shortly after that, you had Seydorf dropping off deep for this time that should see Xabi Alonso step towards him but because of that midfield overload like I stated Kaká drops off into that space Xabi Alonso can't step into that path and you end up having once again that long ball being played over the top into the path of Shevchenko but when he received that ball in right half space his first touch was heavy once again Shevchenko was getting into good positions in that opening half hour of the game but when he received the ball in dangerous positions he lacked that extra bit of quality to make the difference. And when we look to one final example, once again, as Pirlo dropping off a bit deeper, receiving a squared pass from Maldini, we see Crespo in between Hifia and Jamie Carragher, but he is played offside. But the issue that Liverpool encounters is that Pirlo locates Shevchenko, making that run across Traore once again and breaking into the box. Pirlo dinks that ball into the box, Dudek comes off his line, and luckily for Liverpool, Dudek came off his line quick enough and Shevchenko couldn't guide his effort on goal. But as you could see, that midfield overload caused Liverpool problems based off the fact that they didn't have a natural marker on Andrea Pirlo, and that's a bit odd given Steven Gerrard's good job against Claude Makélélé in that Champions League semi-final. Nevertheless, Benitez was forced to make a tactical change, taking off Kuehl, who was unable to continue for Smitzer, and we ended up seeing Smitzer shift out to the right midfield zone, and we had Luis Garcia moving into that central area. And the final issue that Liverpool encountered in that first half was not only the fact that the midfield overload allowed Pirlo on the ball, it also allowed Kaká to run the game in between the lines. What ended up happening there was that we ended up seeing Kaká being involved in the two other goals that Milan scored in that first half, and it stemmed through transitional play and the fact fact that Liverpool's midfield was easily bypassed. When you look to Crespo's first goal, you have Seydorf in a deeper position, closed down by Gerrard and Finnan, and Seydorf's able to split them both to find Pirlo, and Pirlo then splits Xavi Alonso and Gerrard to find Kaká. Kaká is able to turn at that Liverpool back line, the center backs and Traore, and what we end up seeing there is we have Crespo darting between the center backs as expected, and you end up seeing Shevchenko peeling off Traore. Kaká does a very good 
job of poking that ball in between Hifia and Traore. And Shevchenko is able to break into right half space. And he pulls the ball back across Traore and Carragher coming across to find Crespo breaking into the six yard box. And that's how Crespo was able to score his first goal. And when we look to Crespo's second goal, once again, it's Kaká involved breaking in transition by receiving the ball between the lines. But it starts through Gerard. Gerard breaks forward in that midfield zone. He ends up splitting Kaká and Gattuso. But his pass ends up being intercepted by Pirlo. What we end up seeing here now is that Pirlo plays the ball into Kaká, who spins away from Gerard, and we have Xavi Alonso a bit higher. So once again, that Liverpool midfield is bypassed. Kaká breaks at that Liverpool backline, and this time Kaká breaks at the center backs, and he ends up splitting them both to find Crespo darting in between Finnan and Carragher. Crespo receives the ball at the edge of the box, and he pokes it beyond Dudek to put Milan up 3-0. And when you look at Liverpool's overall attacking approach, they were stifled by Milan's defensive shape. When you look at how Milan looked to approach the game, it was very simple for them based off the fact that they had that midfield overload. What we ended up seeing was that we had Shevchenko and Crespo stepping to the center backs, and Kaká played a very interesting role here. If Gerard stepped deeper, then Kaká would step towards him, and if Alonso dropped off deeper to try and get the ball, then you'd have Kaká step into his path. So basically Kaká was stepping to the deepest Liverpool midfield and he would close them out of the game and then everything else would work itself out because if you had Liverpool playing over the top, Stam and Nesta were winning that battle against Milan Baros and if they slid the ball out to the fullbacks, then Milan were able to cope with that threat as well. For instance, if the ball was shifted out to Traore, you would have Gattuso shift out into that zone and then you would have Kaká sitting on Alonso, so that would leave Gerard free. What you can have is Pirlo stepping into that zone and have Seedorf drop off, but if Pirlo was occupying Luis Garcia then you would end up seeing Seydorf shift across to close down that avenue. If the ball was shifted out into Traore and Kaká was on Gerard, then that would make it much easier because you would have Pirlo sticking into his position and then Seydorf could step to Xavi Alonso. If the ball was shifted out to Steve Finnan now, what you'd end up seeing there was Seydorf would step into that path and the same pressing scheme would apply here is that you would have Kaká sitting on Gerard, so you could have Pirlo stepping into the path of Xavi Alonso and Gattuso shift across or you could have Pirlo keep his positioning and have Gattuso step into the path of Xavi Alonso and vice versa. It would work out this way if you had Kaká stepping out into the path of Xavi Alonso because then you could simply have Gattuso shift into Gerrard and Milan would be stifling Liverpool's midfield ensuring that they wouldn't be able to create from deeper positions. So as you could see in that first half Milan were totally dominant and going into the second half we'd be expecting some tactical changes from Rafa Benitez. So when we look to the second half, the big tactical change that Benitez made was that he moved to a 3-4-2-1. We had Didi Hamon come on, and now we had Hamon and Xavi Alonso in that midfield zone, and it allows Steven Gerrard to push forward with Luis Garcia to help support Milan Baros. What this tactical change ended up doing was that it allowed Liverpool more width with the wing backs pushing forward. So now you ended up having Smitzer and John Honorise pushing forward into to advanced zones and that would peg back the fullbacks but it would also push out the shuttlers who should be closing down those wider areas. So you have the wingbacks pushing out into those zones and that's key and the second advantage that it gave to Liverpool was that now they had two natural holding players in that midfield zone. It allowed Xavi Alonso more time on the ball and it ensured that Kaká couldn't constantly break in transition. The issue that they had there was that Gerard never looked comfortable in that deep midfield duo. So now you had Gerard pushing forward to help out Milan Bartos and Gerard was arguably Liverpool's most influential attacking threat so it did help to have him in the final third. But now you had two disciplined players holding their position to ensure that Milan couldn't threaten in those deeper areas. The other advantage that you have with Gerard now was that he was looking to man mark Pirlo when Pirlo got on the ball and that threat from deep was taken out. So as you you could see there was no more issues with Liverpool's set piece defending. They had an answer for Kaká and now they had Gerrard sitting on Pirlo. The biggest thing now was how are they going to get back into the game knowing that they were down three goals. There was no real tactical theme for their comeback but one could suggest that Gerrard being higher up the pitch did play a key role here whereas he wouldn't be in those positions if he was playing in that midfield duel with Xavi Alonso. When we look to Liverpool's first goal we have Xavi Alonso sliding the ball out to Risa who's looking 
looking to take on Cafu. Risa's initial cross is blocked, but what we end up seeing when he gets the ball back is that we have Gerard running off Pirlo in towards the box. In that box, we end up seeing Luis Garcia peeling off Maldini, and we see Milan Bartos pushing across Nesta. So when Risa delivers that ball into the box, Gerard is free, and he ends up nodding his effort on goal into the back post that Dita can't stop. But as you can see in that build-up, Gerard breaking free, you have Maldini and Nesta taken out of the game, and Stam reacts late to Gerard being free because Pirlo should be taking him out. Liverpool's second goal did stem from a Smitzer low drive from distance, but what we can look at in that build-up is that you have Gerard shifting out into space ahead of Maldini, and you have Seydorf looking to occupy two Liverpool players there. Haman did shift the ball out to Smitzer, who did shift central, and then Seydorf had to come across to close down Smitzer when his initial man was Haman. We ended up seeing Smitzer often shift out into those central zones to help Liverpool compete in midfield, based off the fact that he wasn't wary of Paolo Maldini's threat pushing forward. He knew that he could shift out into those midfield zones to get on the ball, and if Maldini was looking to get forward, he could easily recover his positioning to close down the 37-year-old. And when we look to Liverpool's third goal, once again, we witness more of Liverpool reaping rewards from Rafa Benitez's tactical change. What we end up seeing there was Hamon sliding the ball across Seydorf for Jamie Carragher, who looks to push forward. And with Pirlo and Cafu coming across, what we end up seeing there is that we have Milan Bardos running across Nesta and Luis Garcia running across Stan. When Carragher splits Cafu and Pirlo, he finds Milan Bardos and he ends up back healing the ball into Steven Gerrard running off Gattuso and breaking towards the box before Gattuso pulls him down for a penalty that Xavi Alonso eventually converts after Dida did make the initial save. But as you can see in that comeback, we see different elements of Gerrard getting into high positions to ensure that he can influence the game. He scored the goal, he ended up winning a penalty, and his varied positioning allowed Smitzer time on the ball to score Liverpool's second goal. And all of that was down to Rafa Benitez's change to a 3-4-2-1. Besides that, we had Luis Garcia looking to receive the ball on either side of Pirlo with great success. And now we ended up seeing Xavi Alonso vary his movement, knowing that he had Haman there to hold his positioning and that they wouldn't be bypassed if Liverpool were hit in transition. Alonso was able to circulate the ball into advanced positions and that helped Liverpool remain in the game. Meanwhile, we did see positive moves from Milan and a lot of them did stem through Shevchenko. But besides that, we ended up seeing both managers turn to their bench. We saw Milan Bartos leave the game for Cisse and we saw Thomason replace Crespo and Serginho replace Seydorf. But the real tactical shift came in extra time when Rafa Benitez turned to Steven Gerrard and pushed him to right back and we ended up seeing Liverpool shift to a 3-5-2 with Schmitzer moving into midfield. The real battle stemmed through Serginho and Steven Gerrard and what we ended up seeing there was that Gerrard did a very good job winning individual battles against Kaká and Serginho but as that game wear on in extra time we ended up seeing Serginho play a key role into Milan's quality chances. But when you break down the game as a whole Ancelotti won the tactical battle in the first half. Milan dominated that midfield zone with overloads through Pirlo and Kaká. Shevchenko found a key route to goal through Traore and we ended up seeing Liverpool have issues coping with that threat. It forced Rafa to change his tactics in that second half and the shift to a 3-4-2-1 helped Liverpool in so many scenarios. They were able to have that 3v2 battle at the back to provide cover against Shevchenko and Crespo. Haman coming into midfield helped Alonso stifle Kaka in transition. The wingbacks pushing forward ensured that the shuttlers had to push out of position and that the width pulled Milan's diamond out of shape. And we ended up seeing Steven Gerrard get into advanced position positions, score a goal, and create the penalty that helped turn the tide. And as you go into that second half, yes, Milan did cause Liverpool more issues, but the fact that Liverpool came back from 3-0 and brought the game to penalties justifies Rafa's tactical shift, and it makes them worthy winners of that game given the fact that they should have never been in that position and they were able to rescue it. 
Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.